Although each body system is vital for human life, there is one system that has the crucial role of controlling and coordinating all of the others. For that reason, the central nervous system is also referred to as the master control system. Your central nervous system is made up of your brain and spinal cord. You can think of your brain as a central computer that governs and coordinates every function in your entire body. Then the nervous system is like a communication relay that transmits messages back and forth from the brain through the spinal cord to each and every part of your body. The spinal cord is a long bundle of nerve tissue which extends from the lower part of your brain down through your spinal column. Along the way, smaller branches split off from the cord and pass out from the spine. These branches split off again and again into tiny nerve fibers and fill the entire body, going to each cell, organ, and tissue. Every human has an estimated 15 billion nerve cells sending and receiving messages through the spinal cord. But the nervous system is extremely delicate, and it is no coincidence that this is the only body system protected by bone. The skull is formed to protect the fragile brain, and a healthy spine serves to create a bony but flexible shelter for the sensitive spinal cord and nerve root. This is what a normal healthy spine looks like. The spine has 24 bones called vertebra, each creating a movable joint with both the bone above and below. A plump disc separates the vertebra, acting both as a shock absorber and also serving as a spacer for the nerve. The spine should be very straight, but only when you're looking from the front or back. Curvatures in this plane are abnormal and are referred to as scoliosis. But from the side, notice that a healthy spine is far from straight. A normally developed, uninjured spine has several natural curves similar in shape to an elongated S. These curves increase the spinal column's strength, flexibility, and capacity to absorb shock. The presence or absence of these vital curves can kind of make or break the health of your spine and central nervous system. The curved nature of the spine works like a coiled spring. When the load on the spine is increased, by carrying a heavy backpack for example, the curvatures increase in depth becoming more curved to accommodate the extra weight. Then they spring back when the weight is removed. This is demonstrated well during jogging. As contact is made with the ground, the feet strike the surface and push off with enough pressure to lift the body weight. A spine that has spring-like qualities is able to disperse the force, which is crucial for body posture and balance, but also important if you don't want that force impacting your brain. Healthy spinal curves are the mechanism whereby all of the stresses that occur throughout life can be absorbed and dissipated. Healthy curves are classified as either primary or secondary, but what's the difference? Well, in the case of primary curves, you've had them since birth. This is not the case for secondary curves, which develop later on. This means that at one point in life, yes, you were missing two curves. In the beginning, you were shaped like a C. The primary curves form during the fetal development stage. You can see that the C shape is actually well suited to the cramped conditions of the womb. Just after birth, newborns don't yet have the muscle strength to hold their own head up. But in just a short time, things are about to change. Because in the next few months of life, development occurs rapidly as the infant interacts more and more with the world around him. It's an exciting time for a baby. As he starts to turn in the direction of noise or light that catches his attention while talking to giant people. This requires the development and strengthening of the neck to accomplish the lifting and movement of the head, which in turn leads to the development of a secondary curve in the upper spine, the cervical curve. This curve is in the opposite direction of the primary curve, so it does take some time to develop. Then, as a child transitions into crawling, the secondary curve of the lower spine now starts to form. This is the lumbar curve between the rib cage and the pelvis. This is the final curve to develop, preparing the spine for an upright life, and it's responsible for the arch seen in the lower back. This is one reason that crawling is such an important developmental stage for babies. Learning to walk is best left unrushed, as skipping the crawling stage comes with future consequence for the spine. Eventually, the spinal ligaments, which are strong, tough, fibrous bands that connect bones to other bones, are what hold the spinal vertebra in their specific arrangement, preserving the normal arcs and preventing abnormal twisting of the spine, as seen in scoliosis. Bodily impacts can cause micro tears and other injury to the ligaments, which are the very method by which our shock absorber system is preserved. 
leaving the spinal bones and the discs to take all of the force. Now, let's get back to the benefits of proper spinal curves. Aside from the shock absorption benefit, healthy spinal curves ensure the bones are stacked properly on one another, since the vertebrae are designed to fit together like puzzle pieces. This configuration allows stress to be distributed over larger areas of the spine, preventing the strain and injury that occurs when all of the force is directed at certain segments. The proper alignment of the spinal column plays a lead role in maintaining the structure of the bones and preserving the disc spaces, which in turn ensures that all of the nerves branching off of the spinal cord have wide openings to pass through. If only it was common for most people to escape childhood and adolescence and to get through adulthood without experiencing spinal injury. However, in reality, over the course of a lifetime, the spine is subjected to all sorts of extreme forces caused by bouncing, compression, sports collisions, slips and falls, whiplash injury from automobile accidents, and even postural stresses. Between hours spent on computers, cell phones, and tablets, Technology has greatly increased the amount of time human beings spend looking down. Ultimately, for most people, one isolated event alone is not to blame. Instead, their spinal problems are an accumulation of many of life's repetitive movements and positions and accidents. Many injuries may go back further than even the mind can recall. The average five-year-old has had approximately 2,000 falls, of which 200 are considered serious. Going back even further in life, research has found that in childbirths that required intervention by the doctor, with the use of forceps, vacuum extraction, or excessive force, 95% of infants had upper neck injuries. So it's a smart decision to have your child's spine assessed at an early age. If a segment of the spine becomes mispositioned or is not able to move freely, this is referred to as a vertebral subluxation. This occurs when two or more vertebra have limited range of motion or are no longer properly aligned with one another. This can interfere with the normal nerve flow and may interrupt the communication from the brain to the body and from the body back to the brain. Research conducted at the University of Colorado showed that it takes only a small amount of pressure on a nerve, equivalent to the weight of a small coin, to reduce the nerve supply by up to 60%. Nerve compression only results in pain in certain cases. So that means if a nerve is compressed, the area to which it travels could be robbed of up to 60% of its nerve supply, and you may never feel it. Even slight pressure can alter the messages being sent along the nerve. So now let's dive deeper into a crucial part of your spine, your neck, formerly called the cervical spine. This is the important tunnel between your brain and your entire body. Nerve roots exit from the spinal cord and pass through openings made where the two vertebrae fit together, assuming the disc between the bones is plump and healthy. These nerves then branch out to provide sensation and motor control of the shoulders, arms, hands, and fingers. If the nerve roots become compressed or irritated from trauma or degeneration, it can cause pain, numbness, tingling, or muscle weakness. Or, at first, there may be no symptoms at all. The nerve supply from your neck goes to the immune system, pituitary gland, sinuses, face, middle and inner ear, eyes, tonsils, teeth, neck, and shoulder muscles. The nerves from your thoracic spine go to your arms, hands, and fingers, heart, lungs, gallbladder, liver, stomach, pancreas, spleen, kidneys, small intestine, and lymph glands. Nerves from your low back innervate the large intestine, appendix, abdomen, sex organs, uterus, bladder, knees, prostate, lower back, and leg muscles, and that's just naming a few. A spinal injury causing nerve interference in the cervical spine can lead to headaches, migraines, lowered immune system, sinus troubles, hay fever, abnormal sleep patterns, eczema, hearing loss, tonsillitis, chronic cough, pins and needles into the arms and hands. In the thoracic spine, asthma, functional heart problems, bronchitis, influenza, gallbladder trouble, liver conditions, blood pressure problems, indigestion, heartburn, gastritis, lowered immunity, allergies, kidney trouble, chronic tiredness. And in the lower back, constipation, menstrual problems, bedwetting, knee problems, sciatica, backache, poor circulation, swollen ankles, weakness into the legs, and cramping. Wow, I'm out of breath, and that's only naming a few. 
Did you know that less than 10% of your nervous system perceives pain? So quite often by the time pain and symptoms appear, the nerve interference could have been present for months or even years. Think about when a person has a heart attack or a stroke. They don't actually feel the arteries blocking up. They usually don't know anything's wrong until it's too late. Painkillers, muscle relaxers, and anti-inflammatory medications can cover up the symptoms, but they do not get to the root cause of the problem. By masking the symptoms, the problem is allowed to develop silently until there's a major health crisis. And we all know the damaging side effects that can occur from long-term drug use. So why continue filling your body with drugs to hide the cause of the problem? There are just a few more important things to know about the curve in your neck which should be an arc that resembles a backwards-shaped C. The neck supports the head, which is approximately the weight of a bowling ball at 10 to 12 pounds. If the proper curve is in place, the base of the skull is positioned over the shoulders and the core of the body, which then supports the weight of the head as gravity pushes down all of our upright hours. If the natural cervical curve is lost, indicating the ligaments have been injured and deformed, most often the head moves forward and is no longer centered over the body. This is referred to as anterior head syndrome. When the head is in its normal position, the downward force of gravity is directed straight through the body of the bone, which is developed to be the weight-bearing part of the vertebra. The vertebral body is the largest part of the bone, and it's shaped like a box, which is an excellent structure for resisting load longitudinally. In anterior head syndrome, the downward force now is shifted to the frontmost part of the vertebra. In the spine, a natural law affecting bone growth is Wolf's Law. In simple terms, if a bone is under abnormal stress, as an act of compensation, the bone's shape will adapt. In the spine, we see this when the vertebra lose their normal square shape when viewed from the side. Over time, additional bone tissue will form, which is often referred to as bone spurs and can look like jagged edges or spikes coming off of the bone. In addition, the disc will also be affected, Abnormal crushing pressure will cause the disc to prematurely degenerate or to essentially die. This deterioration of the spinal disc, leading to impingement or irritation of the nerve roots, in addition to deformity of the bones, are key characteristics seen in degenerative disc disease. Have you ever noticed how many people comment that they carry their stress in their shoulders? This is often stated in such a way that indicates we can choose where we carry our stress. Simple physics explains that for every inch the head moves forward, approximately 10 extra pounds of stress is placed on the muscles in the neck and upper back that must pick up the slack to support the head. In this instance, the muscles in the neck and upper back must contract and strain to take on this abnormal biomechanical stress. This leads to abnormal muscle tension, often described as a feeling of stress, spasm, trigger points, and muscle pain. The most severe consequences that can occur with extreme loss or reversal of the cervical curve, called cervical kyphosis, may be the changes that occur to the spinal cord. Researchers have documented that in cervical kyphosis, the spinal cord is stretched and flattened against the spinal bones, diminishing the microvascular supply to the spinal cord. Basically, this means that the small blood vessels that supply the spinal cord may become crushed or impaired, which can lead to permanent spinal cord damage. Stretching or tethering of the cervical nerve roots was also documented by the researchers. So what else happens when you have a subluxation? That area of your spine can actually begin to degenerate in as little as two weeks. This degeneration also may involve the development of scar tissue, which can lead to more degeneration and can progress for as long as the biomechanics of the spine in this area is abnormal. This type of degeneration is preventable. Spinal degeneration is not based on your age. You could be 60 years old and have a very healthy spine, or you could be 15 years old and already show signs of degenerative disc disease. The most predictive factors are when the subluxations first occurred, the severity of your injuries, and if your lifestyle aggravates your spinal weaknesses. So let's review. Why is a healthy spine with normal curves so important? The proper alignment of the spinal bones in combination with the normal movement of the spinal joints dissipates the abrupt forces of life, which prevents injury while also allowing us to bend, flex, twist, and move freely.
Some force affecting the spine is totally unavoidable, so a proper curve ensures the stress is spread evenly over the spinal region, preventing excessive wear and tear on any particular segments. Eliminating the excess wear and tear prevents premature degeneration of the bones in spinal discs. A healthy spinal configuration positions the base of the skull over the core of the body, allowing the head to be supported without constant neck and upper back muscle contraction. This not only conserves energy, but also keeps your muscles from living in constant tug of war with your spine. And possibly of most importance, prevents tethering of nerve roots and abnormal stretching of the spinal cord, a serious condition that can lead to microvascular damage affecting the blood supply to the spinal cord. As we now prepare to review your x-rays, please pay special attention to three important indicators. First, are the healthy curves present in your spine? Second, have any of your vertebra become misshapen with the development of jagged edges or bone spurs? And third, how healthy do your discs appear? Are there spaces between certain vertebra that have become more narrow than the rest? Although the disc itself is not seen on x-ray, the space that it fills appears transparent between the vertebra. If any space is diminished, we can infer that the disc is degenerating prematurely or basically that it's being crushed under the abnormally focused pressure on that segment. Ultimately, as you view your x-rays, don't forget about your central nervous system, which is not visible on x-ray. You can go for days without food or water, minutes without air, but without a nervous supply, life cannot exist. Nothing happens in your body without the involvement of your nervous system. Congratulations on taking an important step towards a healthier future.